Father's Day to the fathers out there. We want to welcome everyone and um, just say that for those that are first time or maybe just joining us in the video land, I am not Pastor George. Uh, Pastor George has begun his sabbatical according to his contract. He gets a sabbatical every, I think, five years, and so he'll be doing whatever for the next three months and so he'll be filling in with people like me. Uh, this may be the shortest sermon you've ever heard in <laughs> But anyway, I welcome you to Emmanuel where we, we have, have a passion, passion for God and can have a passion, passion for all. So now we can have you join, stand and join together in our mission theme song.
Father loves us so. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Jesus provides the melody of freedom. Such a sweet song is the liberty. The Holy Spirit gathers us in. We are one family, sisters and brothers of the Lord. You may be seated. Take them before Jesus and lay them at his feet.
and knowing that Jesus does hear our concerns, would you please join me in saying, the Lord listens to our hearts, forgives our sins, and shines upon us. We are surrounded by grace and are not forgotten. Amen. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our afflictions so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope is for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share our sufferings, you all, so also you share our compassion. This ends the reading of God's word. You may notice that since I'm not the tall, dark, handsome guy, somebody has decided to enhance my stature. <laughs> I think they were afraid you couldn't see me over the lectern. Uh, but anyway, uh, as I said, you know, today Father's Day, I want to take a little bit of time to reflect on my father. Um, I grew up in a very conservative community, very conservative um, upbringing. That everything was, I mean, just for example, I remember when our first radio came into our house. We didn't have a TV until I got married. Now, later on, as my parents progressed, you know, they ended up with TV and all that. But having said all that, even the conservative uh, viewpoints that I was growing up in, I never knew my dad to be judgmental. There's a lot of things go on that I know he didn't agree with. There's a lot of things I did that he didn't agree with. But never once was he judgmental. And so I'm hoping that I was able to pass that on to my kids. And one of the things that I tried to instill in, in my kids, especially my daughter, um, was to know why you believe what you believe. She'd come home from school and say, well, I believe such and such. I'd say, well, well so-and-so said that. So-and-so said that. I said, that's not why you believe something. If you know why you believe and why you're strong in your belief, you'll be better for it, and you know you can be a, a better guide for someone for someone else. 
So I'd say I try, and, and that along with they also saw the non-judgmental part of my parents. I mean, when I brought my girlfriend home, uh, who came from a completely different upbringing background than I did, never once did my parents question my choice. And so I take that very, I, I just, I just take that very strongly. That you know, being judged by in today's world. <laughs> we see so much judgment around, and if you don't, if you don't think the way I do, you know, we can't be friends. You know that that type of atmosphere doesn't do any of us any good. And, and I just hope that we can, you know, be open to other viewpoints and that type of thing. Uh, so getting into Corinthians, we're. Pastor George has laid out uh, the scriptures for while he's away. And they're all from 2 Corinthians. But then he also says, you can talk about whatever you want. You know how hard that is? <laughs> somebody gives you a blank piece. I'm not very creative. And so when somebody gives you a blank piece of paper, you just stare at it. And Nothing happens. <laughs> and your mind goes from here to here to here and, and nothing kind of stays put. So, sometimes it's easier to have a viewpoint, even if it's a viewpoint you don't agree with, at least you have something to focus on. I didn't have that. So anyway, as I, and, and I'm also, my wife will tell you, a little bit of a procrastinator. <laughs> you know, if I don't need it done today, tomorrow's another day. And so when I look at a blank piece of paper, Eh, something will come. Something will come. So finally I did sit down and read the scripture that I was supposed to uh, have today. And if you'll notice, it's, there's not a whole lot there. It's basically a greeting, a salutation that we've heard in a lot of other Paul's. First Corinthians, uh, the greeting in First Corinthians is almost the same as what we have here in Second Corinthians. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, feedback or anything to work with. But he was a, Pastor George also did give me a little bit of information from a commentary. And so there's some excerpts here that I'd like to pass on. And these are not my words, these are coming from the commentary. Uh, but as I read through them, it maybe helps us give a more of a uh, overview of what we're going to be looking at here in 2 Corinthians. Um, 2 Corinthians, it's not easy reading. Okay? Uh, it is realistic, honest, and profoundly spiritual. It tells of God's call to serve the gospel through thick and thin. To be the best we can be for Christ and for other people. Even when life is hurtful and tough. It reminds us that, the, that these those Christians who reveal the risen life of Jesus most clearly are often those who have to live in the shadow of the cross. And it assures us that even the most painful experiences of our living are within range of God's grace. God can su sustain us and strengthen us even in the hard times. So if your life is going well, the sun's shining on you, and all your fields are fruitful, this letter may not say much to you. But in most of us, the time will come when we'll need scriptures of this kind. When the storms rage around us and thorns and pierce and pain our hearts, writing like this will be in the midst of stress. It will speak to you in deep and important ways. And, and then we go on, like going from 1 Corinthians, and we didn't, in other words, we didn't study 1 Corinthians and move into 2 Corinthians. But if you do, it's the, the comment here is turning from 1 Corinthians to 2 Corinthians is almost like leaving the room in the middle of a TV program, a movie, or what have you. And then coming back a few minutes later, uh, the main characters are still there. 
They're they're just in um, they're just in a different situation. Sequence of, of life has moved on. And the most obvious difference between the two letters is the change in tone. Paul is less confident than he as he was before. In First Corinthians. He has plenty of advice to give. And so he is he's projecting that. So everything's going, if you want to say going his way, you know, he's projecting his message and he's he's really, if you want to say gung ho about the message he's he's uh, given out. Because he's trusted by so many people there. And so his advice, his pastoral counsel, it seems to flow pretty freely. Now, by contrast, if we get to 2 Corinthians, the bond with the church seems more tense and fragile. He has to defend and explain himself in a new way. Because, see, there's, uh, like I say, time has moved on, and, and what has happened, more people have moved in, and maybe with a different viewpoint, and so some people are starting to question, you know, What's this, what's this guy really talking about? And uh, so his first letter was written from while well, he was in Ephesus, which, I mean, we're so used to jumping on a plane and going somewhere. You know, back in those days, it wasn't that simple. But Ephesus and, and Corinth were close enough that people did go back and forth uh, fairly readily. And he... He did again visit shortly before writing this second letter. And that did not go well for Paul. Uh, it was, it left behind with him a memory of clash and challenge rather than comfort and care. He, he used the words pain, punishment, and sorrow. And all this then made him kind of leery about going back another time. And and so he, he'd write letters instead. He wrote this letter instead. Well, some people accepted that and then some people were kind of upset you know, that he didn't take the time to show up again. He just writes a letter. One of those no-win situations, you know. <laughs> damned if you do and damned if you don't. You know, it's just he, he, some people were, were okay with that and some people uh, really uh, took it took it very uh, very personal that he wouldn't take the time to show up uh, personally. You see, a, a group of newcomers had arrived in Corinth and it seems likely that Paul heard about them through Titus and says, for they call themselves Christians, they talk of Jesus, they've gained the friendship and true trust of believers at Corinth and they apparently have moved the focus away from what Paul had been trying to instill uh, in, the, in, in the people in Corinth. And so I think that was part of the uh, issue that he's dealing with, that now, okay, they're not taking everything he says as gospel, okay? Um, and, and so we look at that, so that's kind of the a quick overview of the difference between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. There's been some, uh, if you read through 2 Corinthians, like I said, it's not an easy read. Uh, and it, it just kind of jumps back and forth. And there are some scholars, some that think that maybe this is several letters that have kind of been cobbled together because they, they just jump from one back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so there's kind of like partitions in, in there. And, uh, but yet some of these have now moved back. You no, know, it's just a letter and that's just the way, that's just the way he was feeling, you know, and just the way he was writing at the time. So any way you look at it, you know, it, it's, it's just kind of over, but he's dealing with He's dealing with the fact that there are people saying different things than what he was trying to get get them to say. So if we look at the first, first, uh, like I say, the beginning of the chapter, like I said, this is kind of common for Paul when he sends out a letter, you know, the salutation, and he just, uh, I think Pastor George has even said he's kind of uh, trying to 
have the fact out there that he does belong, you know, and he, he gives his credentials. And we see that uh, through, the, through the letters. Uh, there are two details that are new in this one, and that is uh, the reference to Timothy, our brother, and the saints through Achaia. Uh, Timothy, Paul actually recruited Timothy, and he's been traveling back and forth, and they've been working together. Uh, so that's, that's really not uh, a surprise um, because Paul did recruit him. And, uh, and so the Corinthian people also knew Timothy. And they were able to go back and forth. Uh, and so we, as far as the, reading, uh, the writing, uh, Timothy is involved in the writing. Paul is still the scribe, as you can tell. <coughs> The intense mental anguish or energy in the writing is coming from Paul. Paul's the one who brought the gospel to Corinth. He is the one who has fallen out with the church. And he is the one whose relationship with them needs to be restored. And that's the basis for the, uh, the second letter here in Corinthians. So, if we look at what the beginning of Corinthians has to say and the Corinthians overall. And we look at what we see going around us in the world today. You know, as I said, distrust. Uh, believe it or not, there are people out there that think we are wrong. <laughs> no. You know that? <laughs> you know, we, uh, and, and it seems like everybody with their own viewpoint think they're right. But there are people, and in fact, I got an email uh, from Pastor Jordan before he left, and he he just sent it as a uh, you want you to be aware. And we had the movie night here this Friday night, this past Friday, and he said there's there's a fellow that's spreading this on social media just to try to get a rise out of people. And so, being the nosy one that I am, I had to go look this guy up and see see what he was uh, what he was putting out there. And it was it was amazing the people that were so upset. Because we would dare to show the movie that we showed Friday night in, in a church setting. You know, and, and, and some of the comments, um, I even saw one, anyone up for protest. So I asked, asked Lisa, we weren't able to be there Friday night, so I asked Lisa if there was any issue. She said no. You know, but the fact is, you know, somebody's picking up, I don't even know the guy. I, I mean, he's from Lake Placid, I did pick that up. Um, and he has quite a following, I guess. I don't know what church he belongs to. I don't know anything about the guy. But he's putting in his, you know, who would go to a church that shows this type of movie is what, basically what his question was. Or his, maybe it was, would you like your church to be showing this movie? And then he gets a rise out of everybody. So, like I say, there are people that really don't agree with us being you know, inclusive and, you know, open to everybody. I go back to what I said about my father. That's kind of the way I was brought up, you know, to be, to be accepting. Um, I, you know, I like to. One of the things that that he kind of taught me said, if you want people to respect your viewpoint, you also have to respect theirs. And so there's there's hopefully somewhere along the line we have lost the ability to sit down and communicate. You know, talk about what we have in common and go from there. We may not agree on every single issue, and that's fine. You know, the other, the other saying is if there's three people in the room that they all agree, two people aren't needed, you know? And so, you know, the, the diversion of opinion is, is very important, but we have to be able to respect the other people, listen to what they say, and then go from there. Uh, so it just brings back the the uh, aspect that we've lost, seems like we've lost the ability to respect other people's viewpoints. Go back to my daughter, when she was going through high school, you know, I would sometimes play the devil's advocate, even though I agreed with what she said, I'd take the other side, just to see, you know, what, what her give and take was, um, even though I agreed wholly with what she said, I would go the other way just to see how the response was. We have a grandson that's uh, in uh, ROTC in, in high school. 
And he was telling me we, when we were home in Pennsylvania, he was telling me that they did a debate. And of course, in that debate, they're not given the blank sheet of paper like I was. You know, they were given a viewpoint that they have to defend. And he said it's very interesting because um, as he goes through this process, he's given the viewpoint and it happened to be uh, the Second Amendment, you know, guns, rights, and that type of thing. They put him on, on the uh, side, of, if I'm not mistaken, they put him on the side of defending the, uh, the rifles that are being used. You know, not that he agrees with it, but he said it was, it was enlightening to him to be able to do some research and find out different things. Listen to the other side, even though he may have agreed with the other side, you know, be able to hear the other side of the viewpoint. And I remember being in debate class when I was in high school, you know, and like I say, it just seems like in today's world we've lost that, I don't know how to say ability, we lost the being able to do that, to listen to somebody else without being, without going to the, you know, the hateful the hateful side of everything right away. And that's, I don't know if we can ever get back to that, but you know, you take politics and religion, you know, I was always told there's two things you don't discuss, politics and religion, and it seems like, you know, both of them have their, have their issues. And here again, it goes back, in my mind, lack of respect for the, for the other person. So, we just need to, in our own little way, try to be able to bring that back what we can, um, accept other people's viewpoints, even though we may think they're wrong, uh, they're also thinking the same about us, but if we can somehow get together some common good and just hash things out with going, with going down the, the hate, the hate avenue right off the bat. I just pray that, that uh, we can get to that point. Um, I don't know if we can or not, but it, one thing about it, if, if each of us can do that, at least we have that little part of the world, and if we can somehow uh, get, get to that point, it would make this world so much of a better place to live. And so in our own little world, if we can make our world better, make somebody else's world better, um, I think that's what we're called to do. Amen. 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 All right. Um, for the uh, prayers for the people, we'll enter into the time for prayers for the people. I don't know if, uh, if any, you know, if each of you have a special need. Uh, just take it. Now's the time to take it to the Lord. Uh, he will listen. He will hear. And uh, so, join us in a moment of prayer. Most gracious and giving God, we come before you this morning keeping in mind all the things that are going, around, going on around us. We just pray for patience. We pray for the ability to be able to listen to other people. We pray now that you would also help with like our government officials. We pray for our government government officials. They do have a tough job because everybody has their own viewpoint. We just ask that they be given wisdom to handle it the best way they know how. And we pray that you go with each of us as we go out. Keep us safe. Keep everyone keep everyone uh, happy and for those that need comfort and healing be with each and every one of them we, we know you we know you know the needs we know you're there if people just want to reach out and accept your forgiveness in your name we pray this morning amen
<coughs> and anyway, there are opportunities to be a liturgist. And you don't have to be full of words like I am. So let's join together in prayer. Precious God, we thank you for all the opportunities that you give us to serve you, for all the opportunities you have provided us to help others. We are thankful that you have brought us to this place and that you have moved through here with your spirit and touched us, touched our hearts, touched our minds, touched our souls. We pray that you would continue to guide us, not only through this service and this day, but through the life of this church, helping us to take that journey of faith with you at our side. Thankful that you lift us up. Thankful that you bless us in so many ways. And thankful that you allow us to bless others. Amen. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward? that we use to give the food out. But we get extra food in um, meat and um, produce on the morning of the pantry, and we use our own bags for that, donated bags. So if you have any bags, we have enough for tomorrow, but start saving those bags and bring them in. We will fill them with good stuff to give to others. Now, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
if you could all stand for the benediction. You put your hands out and bless each other, bless us as we bless you. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. And may we continue to do justice, walk humbly, and love kindness. Amen. Next Sunday we have a musical concert. So I'll bring you friends. I invite you a musical.